Super fans aren't created the moment people find you. They're created by the moments that you create for them over time. So this takes time. And unfortunately, in this world of on demand, we want everything now. That and this don't go together, right? So we need to be, uh, we need to have, uh, as Gary Vee says, macro patience, but micro hustle. So let's micro hustle on exactly how to do this. Let's start from the bottom of this pyramid here. How do we convert our casual audience to active audience members? Well, many of you might have experienced this first tactic, or what I like to call moment of activation. Remember, these people just found us for the first time. How do we activate them? Well, maybe this happened here. You've been in the hallways. You've spoken to people who you've never met before. And what are these conversations like? They're pretty surface level, right? Hey, where are you from? What do you do? What's your business? How big is your email list? Don't ever ask that. That's kind of a vain thing. But these are very surface level things until one of you says something that the other person can relate to. And then some incredible things happen, right? That conversation might be like, oh, yeah, I'm from San Diego. Oh, cool. Where are you from? I'm from the Bay Area. Oh, that's cool. I went to school in the Bay Area. Oh, you did? Where'd you go to school? Uh, UC Berkeley. No way. I went to UC Berkeley. Really? What year? 2005. Oh, 2004. Yeah, go Bears. We're best friends now. <laughs> right? Right? You find that one or two people in the crowd, and you just gravitate toward them, right? The cool thing is we can do the same thing online when we show up. Not just show up to talk about our business, but show up to bring a little bit of personality to what it is that we're doing. Now, I had an idea way back in the day when my podcast started. This is 2010. And if you've listened to my show, you know that my voiceover guy, John Melly, reads a fun little fact about me at the very beginning. And I remember pitching my podcast to some mentors and other very well-known podcasters back in 2010. And I said, hey, I got this idea because I want to connect with my audience. I'm going to have my voiceover guy read a fun fact about me. And they're like, Pat. That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. First of all, you're going to pay somebody to say that? And second of all, like, people don't care. Get to the thing that they're there for. And I said, no, no, just 10 seconds, I'll do it. So I did it anyway. And now those people are coming back and saying, wow, Pat, that was, that was a genius move. You're a genius. And I said, no, I'm not a genius. I'm just a human trying to connect with another human. Right? People do business with other people. Not logos, not websites, not brands, but how those brands and people behind them make them feel. Now, I remember I was at uh, another event here in San Diego, and we were on the Hornblower, and there was a woman who was screaming at me across the way. And she was like, Pat Flynn, there you are, Pat Flynn, big baby. Big baby Pat Flynn. And I was like, dude, that's so rude. What? I don't, what? She comes up to me, and her name is Jennifer on her name tag. She's like, Pat, I'm such a big fan. I'm like, wait, I'm not understanding the equation here. And she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I just remember in one of those episodes, you had mentioned that you were an 11-pound, 12-ounce baby. <laughs> and I had a big baby, so that I, like, I like connected with you on that. And I was like, oh my god, okay, that makes sense now. I wouldn't recommend doing that again, but yeah, I was. Here's some proof. That's me. Three days after I was born, don't look at it in the, in the, in the eyes. It's kind of scary. But that was me literally three days after I was born. 11 pounds, 12 ounces. I set a record at the hospital. It was ridiculous. Obviously, I haven't grown much since then. <laughs> but this idea of putting more of you out there is so, so important. And you might be like, Pat, okay, I get it. I need to put my personality out there a little bit more. You don't need to share every little thing about it. You don't, you don't need to share. And you know, you got to be careful about things like religion, politics, and all those kinds of things that can be very divisive. But little things that your friends know about you, why doesn't your audience know about that, right? So you're like, okay, Pat Flynn, Back to the Future. Okay, so what? Well, check out these tweets from Andy. He says, I can't even watch Back to the Future anymore without thinking about Pat Flynn and SPI. <laughs> Here is Joel, who was at Target. He's like, hey, I just saw this doll, and I thought of you. And then Chris was like, hey, Back to the Future is playing right now on ABC. I wonder if Pat Flynn can sense it. <laughs> yes, I can, actually. Um, so without me even having to do anything, because people know a little bit about me, I'm showing up at Target. I'm showing up when they see a DeLorean on the street. And I'll, I swear, every week I get some people shooting me photos of a DeLorean on the street. Um, here's the big lesson. Embrace your weird, right? Your weird is what makes you, you. That's your advantage over everybody else. Right? Do you all agree? We should embrace our weird just a little bit more. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that's... Moment of activation number one, embracing your weird, putting a little bit of yourself out there, connecting on that level like you would in person at an event. Now, let me take you back into time. See what I did there? We're going to go back to when April, my wife, remember the Backstreet Boy fan, uh, when she was 16. 
Because this introduces the band to her, this moment. She had just broken up with her boyfriend at the time. She was devastated. She's crying on her pillow. She turns on the radio. There was no Spotify. There was no iPods or anything at this time. And on the radio, she heard a song that she had heard many times before. But it didn't really mean anything to her back then. But in this moment, because of her breakup, she connected with this song because every single word of this song was describing every single thing that she was going through in life at that moment. And the name of that song was Quit Playing Games With My Heart by the Backstreet Boys, right? Quit playing games with my heart. Playing ga- uh. I still don't have a framed picture yet, by the way. So that's what connected her. That was her moment of activation because they got the lyrics right to their target audience. Think about it, Backstreet Boys, right? Their target audience, teenage girls back then. Now it's, you know, 30 to 40 year old women. But teenage girls back then, right? What happens in a girl's life in that moment? They fall in love, they fall out of love, things happen. How do they describe it? Do they say, oh, I lost my romantic fervor of my life? No. They say, oh my gosh, that guy, he's just playing games with my heart. Okay, let's write a song about that, boom, it becomes a number one hit, right? Jay Abraham once said, if you can define the problem better than your target customer, they will automatically assume you have a solution, right? You want a person to come across your sales page, your brand, to listen to you on your podcast and go, oh, finally somebody gets me. This guy gets it, this girl gets it. I'm gonna stick with them. I'm activated now, I'm gonna subscribe because nobody else described it better, right? So if you can find the problem better than target customer, they will automatically assume you have a solution. So number one, know who you're talking to, right? Have conversations with them but also pull out the language that they're using. And it's almost kind of cheating because when you have these conversations, they will tell you about their problems, they will tell you about what's going on and what they're struggling with, and they'll tell you in their language, and then you just kind of rebound that language back to people like them. And they go, oh, you get me, you get me. That's how we want people to feel, that's a moment of activation, right? Third moment of activation. We're gonna fast forward a little bit in time to my junior year of college. I was in the marching band, by the way, and in the marching band, it was always fall was like busy season, right? And I was an architect, so I was always in studio. So in the fall, nobody even knew I existed outside of those worlds. But in the spring, I had a lot of time, like literally two classes per week, Tuesday and Thursday. So I did what every male college student would do with all that extra time. Any guesses? Party? Mm, I wasn't that cool. <laughs> Video games, that is right. I'm that much of a nerd. And I got hooked on this game called World of Warcraft, or WoW as they call it, and wow, it sucked up a lot of my life. It really did. I remember staying up late, drinking Monsters and Red Bulls, 48 hours straight, because I had to finish the quest with my guild. Like, that's just what you do. You don't let your guild down, right? So here's how this game works. And I remember, when I got access to this game, I, I just knew, I just knew right when I started it that it was, o- that it was over. I was gonna be engulfed in this. So here's how this game works. You pick between Horde and Alliance, you pick a character, it goes in this virtual world, and this was like pretty new back then, where you can interact with other people, you go on a couple quests. Quest number one is so easy. You like slay a creature, you get some gold, you get points, and then you unlock new abilities, and you're like, wow, I forgot to go to class, right? (laughs) So this game, well actually, let me give you another game. You might remember this game, Angry Birds, right? Here's the first level, the first level of Angry Birds. You got an Angry Bird on the left-hand side, you got one bad piggy on the right-hand side. It's like you one hit and this thing breaks. It's the worst architecture I've ever seen. And you win, you get some points, and then all of a sudden you forget to pick up your kids from school. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about the small, quick win. The small, quick win. Charles Duhigg talks about this in his book, The Power of Habit. There's a whole chapter dedicated to, okay, we want to change people's lives, right? Ho- ho- raise your hand if you want to change people's lives with your business. Amazing, thank you. If you want to change a person's life, start by changing their day first. Start small to go big. Impact them in a small, quick, easy way. This is why challenges work really well. Three-day challenges, 24-hour challenges. Get them a quick result and they go, wow, imagine what I could do if I spent all my time here. So are you in your business right now going too big too fast? Or might there be a way for you to take just a little section, a little snippet of that and turn it into something that can provide some free, amazing value up front and then blow their minds so that they keep coming back later. 